Well, permafrost is, uh, is first and foremost not a material or earth or, or anything you would touch. It is actually a thermal condition of the ground. That means that we define permafrost as ground or material that remains frozen for at least two consecutive summers. So you can see immediately that you don't necessarily refer to a rock or to ice, but you refer to a material that is frozen. And I think um, that is the way we define permafrost. Permafrost, because uh, it is a thermal condition of the ground, is directly depending on the temperature of the air. Therefore, if uh, you have very cold temperature, or if you're in a region with very cold temperatures in the Arctic or in the Antarctic or in mountain regions, the permafrost is going to go very deep uh, because the frost, if you want, is going to uh, penetrate very deep into the surface of the Earth. In other regions, more to the south, um, it is the case, for instance, in northern Europe, there uh, the temperature of the air on average for the air is cold, but not as cold as in, for instance, eastern Siberia. Therefore, is the permafrost not as thick as uh, it is in uh, these colder regions. But uh, permafrost is very much linked to the Arctic. It is very much linked to the Arctic. I mean, if you look at the Earth overall, uh, permafrost is under, we think, approximately 24%, 25% of the emerged part of the land part of the northern hemisphere. So if you take the whole uh, sphere, like the whole uh, globe, then you can imagine that 24% of the Earth, of the land part of the Earth, is actually frozen underneath. So it is quite a spectacular number. And indeed, much of this area is located in the Arctic. There are small bits of the Antarctic, the one without ice that are frozen, small bits in mountains, particularly in the, on the Tibet Plateau. Uh, but most of the permafrost is located in the Arctic. That's also where it's the deepest, for instance, in eastern Siberia or in the Canadian archipelago. So how deep does it uh, get? Well, it can get uh, as shallow as one or two meters, that is the case in northern Europe, but it also can get up to 1,500, 1,600, 1,700 meters in some parts of Siberia. So those are the numbers that uh, we know. So it, is, it can be very deep. Uh, almost two kilometers deep uh, into the uh, subsurface. How is climate change uh, linked to permafrost? Well, I think I just uh, explained that permafrost is directly linked to the temperatures uh, of the air. The colder the temperature, the deeper the permafrost, and the colder the permafrost. Well, we now know that the stronger uh, strongest warming is taking place at the pole on the Earth and we also know that we expect an even greater warming of the air temperatures for the next hundred years at the poles. Therefore it will have a direct impact on the permafrost. We already see that uh, because we know that temperatures of permafrost consistently in uh, the Arctic and in the, Anta in the Antarctic are increasing already. So there is this direct impact on the permafrost. And uh, are there great concerns about the permafrost thaw? Well, there are obviously concerns about permafrost thaw. Um, it matters because it is not only that the warmer temperatures mean that the permafrost is actually thawing or, or thinning. What is important is that the role this thaw has on the global climate system. You have to think that there is in permafrost stored and frozen over thousands of years very large quantities of what we call organic carbon. To make it simple, the organic cable, uh, carbon is like the most basic component that plants uh, and bacteria feed on in soils and they convert this carbon to CO2 or carbon dioxide or methane which are the most important greenhouse gases. So, if you think, if you get some permafrost thaw in the Arctic, that means that you will get greater amounts of carbon converted to these greenhouse gases in the Arctic and that will directly influence the climate of the entire Earth. And uh, where in particular are these concerns uh, perhaps the greatest? Well, I think um, you know that in some parts of the Arctic you have very deep permafrost 
and now it will take some time to thaw this permafrost. In some areas, like in uh, Western Siberia, in Northern Europe, or at the southern margin of the permafrost, there the permafrost is very shallow, or is very thin. And that is where we're expecting the most impacts, because this permafrost is disappearing, literally, and therefore uh, we expect impacts in what I was addressing before, meaning that uh, the carbon that is stored until that will be uh, released to the atmosphere as greenhouse gas, but also because there is substantial um, infrastructure in those areas. Uh, that is the case for um, oil and gas infrastructure, for industrial, uh, in industrial infrastructure, but also for a large number of communities located on the Arctic that are on permafrost. So uh, what have been the recent changes in permafrost, uh, for example, in the 21st century? Well, the 21st century, we're just starting to, uh, to get the values here because it takes substantial amount of time to analyze the values that come back. We do look at changes in permafrost in the sense that we have boreholes. A borehole is simply a hole in the ground where we put a chain with temperature sensors on it. It needs to be a very long chain if your permafrost is very, uh, very deep. And there, uh, the changes that we see is that we see an increase consistently everywhere in the Arctic. We see it an even greater increase in places where the permafrost is very cold. So it warms faster. When it gets closer to zero, it warms up too, but it warms at a slower rate. But in any case, it is warming everywhere consistently, and in some cases, when we reach zero degrees, permafrost just simply disappears. So the material stays there, the Earth, but it's not frozen anymore. Uh, permafrost is, of course, nothing new, but uh, is it perhaps getting that uh, recognition that it uh, might need uh, only the last uh, few years? You're very right. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, permafrost, and the word permafrost was defined uh, for engineering purposes. I think the, uh, there were many explorers that were amazed, I think, at the first uh, features they saw in the Arctic when they were exploring it at, in the 19th and even earlier, early part of the 20th century. But what really uh, um, prompted the first studies on permafrost was, for instance, the construction of the trans balkalian Railway in Russia. So that was a major milestone in the no uh, growing knowledge on permafrost. And, and that's what drove uh, research on permafrost for a very long time. The army in the US, for instance, was very much involved in, in fostering uh, studies on permafrost. Now, what has changed very much is that we realized very recently that there were a lot of ecological consequences, socio-economical consequences linked to the thawing of the permafrost in the Arctic, and also, even more recently, that the thawing of the permafrost was potentially going to um, release major quantities of greenhouse gases and, and, and substantially alter the, um, the equilibrium of the planet. And, and therefore, I think there is this growing uh, interest and growing awareness that permafrost is, is very relevant to the Earth's climate system.